Hello and welcome. A new case in job sequencing, processing and jobs on two machines. But this time we are with a case where the information regarding number of units in each job is also available. But at the time of job sequencing, we don't require to consider the number of units. This is the time rather processing time in hours per unit. On the basis of this only, we first go for job sequencing. That means we are going to determine the reference order and then we can prepare the schedule or statement of minimum total time left and idle time on the basis of the information regarding number of units and hours per unit. But first on the basis of <coughs> As per unit, we are going to prepare the job sequencing schedule. And according to Johnson's algorithm, the process is very simple. If the lowest time is on machine 1 or first machine, the job is placed on the left hand side of the schedule. And if the lowest time of the remaining jobs is on machine 2, the job is placed on right hand side. Now, in this schedule, job D is with the minimum time because at this time all six jobs are to be considered and in this six into two twelve time slots four is the minimum that is the time on machine one for job D since it is on machine one job D is placed at first job D now the remaining 5 jobs A, B, C, E, F the minimum time is on machine 1 and that is for job A again on left hand side since the least time is on machine 1 A on the second place now the remaining jobs are B, C, D, F the minimum time is on C and F that is 7 hours that means there is tie between C and F and the tie is tie between least time is on machine 1. When the tie is on machine 1, the job with the lowest total time is placed on left hand side. First, 7 plus 12, 19, 7 plus 15, 22. So job C is with the minimum total time. It will be placed on left hand side and on its right hand side, the another job involved in tie will be placed. Now, remaining two jobs B and E. B has minimum time of 8 but on machine 2. So, B will be placed on right hand side. That means here B and the last job remaining is E that will be placed on the so in this way, in order D, A, C, F, E, B, we are going to perform all these jobs. Now the next step is to prepare the statement of total time elapsed, minimum total time elapsed according to this job sequencing schedule or this suggested schedule of jobs. But in that statement, the new thing will be we are going to consider the number of units in each job. In job D, we are going to produce 5 units. So all 5 units, the order will be processing on machine 1 first and on machine 2 then. And in that order, we have to consider all the number of units of all the jobs. So in the next lecture, we are going to prepare the statement of total time and idle time but considering the number of units. That's it. Thank you very much. We are meeting in the next lecture.